This video will cover two of the most incredible deathbed conversion stories from the life of St. John Bosco. You don't want to miss this episode. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A government employee in Turin had taken part in enforcing laws against the rights of the church, and now this employee had become seriously ill. He had lived away from the sacraments for a long time, partly because he constantly read bad newspapers that helped stifle every feeling of faith in his heart. According to the attending physician, the pharmacist told the parish priest that this gentleman would not see the sunset the next day. The parish priest knew with certainty that the sick man didn't care about priests. Persuaded that he would be rejected, the pastor sent a message begging Don Bosco to try to save this poor soul. Don Bosco agreed. Upon entering that house, he was greeted by a young man who gave him a very warm welcome. He was one of the most faithful boys to attend the festive oratory of Valdoco, and he was the son of the sick man who loved him deeply. The boy was the source of all his good and happiness in this world. This man wasn't religious, but he allowed his son to influence him. The boy often gave him the crucifix to kiss. The father agreed to this, wanting to please the boy. His son sometimes said, Do you want me to get Don Bosco to come and bless you? The blessing does so much good and will make you well. The father always answered no, but with an attitude that the son didn't mind. Then he would mutter, how many superstitions these priests put in young people's heads. So when Don Bosco visited, the boy said, oh, Don Bosco, come, come, Papa is so ill. Is he? Don Bosco replied. Well, tell him, if you please, that I have come to visit him. Yes, Papa will be pleased, the boy exclaimed. And immediately he went into the bedroom. Papa, Papa, it's Don Bosco. Aren't you glad he's here? And without waiting for an answer, he ran back out to take Don Bosco by the hand, saying, Come, Papa is waiting for you. Come and give him a blessing. Don Bosco insisted that the boy inform him in a more satisfactory manner. Don Bosco especially wanted to ask the boy what his father had said to him, but the boy wouldn't let him speak, and he pushed Don Bosco into the room. His sick father gave Don Bosco a fiery look. However, the priest did not lose heart and thoughtfully asked the man, How are you? I'm as you see, replied the sick man dryly. Take courage, said Don Bosco. Your son, Albert, will pray for you, and I'll join him. Don Bosco, the man said in exasperation, I don't believe these stories. Don't even try to tell me about them. The son left the room, confused at how rudely his father had greeted Don Bosco. The servant of God, taking advantage of being alone, wasted no time, and continued by asking, Don't you believe in the power of the prayer of an innocent person? Besides, I didn't come here to disturb you. I found myself in the neighborhood, so I sought the honor of visiting you because of the high esteem in which I hold you. With his loving, witty manner, Don Bosco narrated some pleasant, contemporary stories. They fell into a conversation that delighted the poor sick man and somewhat soothed his frowning brow. As Don Bosco saw the man take an interest in that discussion, he suddenly said, Well, the hour is getting late, and I don't want to trouble you any longer. But before I leave, will you allow me to bless you? The gentleman answered him indifferently, Do what you like. Don Bosco then called the boy, Albert. The father asked him, Why did you call my son? I want him to say a Hail Mary with me for his good father, Don Bosco replied. Ah, oh, he doesn't need to. Don't be inconvenienced, the man protested. But Don Bosco called the boy again. Albert! The little boy came, and Don Bosco said to him, Listen, Albert, let's say a Hail Mary for your father. He's very sick, and you need the Lord to preserve him for you. What would you do if the Lord were to fail you? You would be left alone abandoned without your father, your dearest friend and faithful counselor. How many occasions of evil? How many wicked companions? How many bad books would you encounter in the world, endangering your innocence? And no one would warn you or extend a helping hand. Your inexperience would lead you astray, poor Albert. 
And then, at the point of your death, how much remorse you would feel for not having had a guardian angel at your side. And how much remorse might you feel in eternity if you are divided forever from your father. Don Bosco expressed these and similar ideas in a few cautious and vivid words, but he spoke to the son so that the father might understand. Don Bosco then narrated the story of a poor sick man orphaned as a child. As Don Bosco recounted his biography, Albert wept. The father wanted to resist, but one could see that he was deeply moved. Don Bosco said, so let us get down on our knees and recite not just one, but three Hail Marys. Then he sent the young man into the hall and said to the sick man, make the sign of the cross. The father made the sign of the cross with indifference, and Don Bosco gave him his blessing. Then the priest inquired about the man's studies and his positions. He asked him about his years of boyhood, youth, and adulthood. The sick man began to open up. Without letting the man see that he was learning about him, Don Bosco jested one moment and commiserated about human miseries the next. In the process, the priest drew from his lips just enough to know the complete state of his soul. Seeing the man tired, he said, Now, if you wish, I'll give you absolution. Absolution? The man scoffed. But to receive absolution, one must confess, and I don't want to confess. Don Bosco said, But you have. You've already confessed, and I have understood everything you've told me. And that's enough? That's enough, said Don Bosco. Make the act of contrition now. I is it possible? The man wondered. Yes, God forgives you everything, Don Bosco explained. He's so good and merciful to those who repent with a true repentance. The sick man then broke into sorrowful tears, exclaiming, Ah, oh, God is good indeed. He remained exhausted and uneasy. Seeing that in a few hours the man would die, as the doctor had said, Don Bosco hurried on. He questioned the man some more. Finding the man ready to do what the church required of him, Don Bosco offered him absolution. Finally, he promised the man that he would take care of Albert. Then he sent word to the parish priest of St. Augustine's to bring Holy Viaticum quickly. The parish priest wasted no time in coming. He also brought holy oil, but barely had time to administer extreme unction because the poor man was dying. By all accounts, the man died in the state of grace. But before we move on to the second story of a deathbed conversion, I'd just like to remind you that if you'd like to enroll in our Saturday Mass intentions for the promoters of St. John Bosco, just click on the link that should appear above me on the screen. Now we continue with the final story. On another occasion, Don Bosco was invited to visit Carmel's sick notary, a parishioner. Every effort the priests had made to lead him back to God had been useless. In the past, Don Bosco had also dealt with him. The man received the priest courteously, but coldly. As usual, Don Bosco was caring and asking for news of the patient's illness, affectionate in comforting him, and jovial in cheering him up with his conversation. The notary was enchanted. Don Bosco then began to hint at things of the soul, but the notary set him straight. Let us change the subject, he said to Don Bosco. You already know my beliefs. I'll never be persuaded to confess. And why is that? Don Bosco asked. Because I don't believe in things of religion. See those books I keep on the coffee table? The man explained. Don Bosco approached the coffee table and picked up one of the volumes, a book by Voltaire, the 18th century deist philosopher. What of it? He asked. The man said, anyone who agrees with that writer will never have the weakness to confess. You say it's a weakness to confess? Don Bosco asked. Did you know that this illustrious man, Voltaire, whose beliefs you say you share, wanted to make his confession at the point of his death? I can't believe that, the man scoffed. Don Bosco said it's true, and he would have confessed if his friends had not prevented him. Here, Don Bosco told the notary about Voltaire's death and agony. The gentleman listened with growing interest and emotion. Don Bosco concluded, Now I will tell you why I hope that Voltaire was saved. Is it even possible? exclaimed the sick man as a shiver shook him. Most possible, Don Bosco repeated. 
Holy Scripture describes only one man as damned to hell, Judas. The Lord didn't want us to know the eternal fate of others so that we might preserve the hope of their salvation. Is it even possible that Voltaire was saved? After all he said and wrote denying Catholic teachings, the man asked. Don Bosco assured him that God is so good and so merciful, my dear friend. One act of love and repentance is enough to erase any guilt. Voltaire could have been saved, the man exclaimed again. I have my opinion, and I believe that he was saved, Don Bosco insisted. For certain he was saved. What did he lack? He had the desire to confess, and his pain was excruciating. He was unfortunate only because he didn't have a priest nearby. If he turned away from despair and conceived an act of love of God, of true repentance, then I'm certain that his faith would have saved him. The man fell silent. After some thought, he exclaimed resolutely, I want to confess. Take those books away from me. I don't want them in my house anymore. Do with them whatever you will. He made his confession. At 8 p.m., he received the Holy Viaticum. At 10 o'clock, he was anointed with holy oil and offered the papal blessing. Finally, before midnight, he died with genuine faith, sorrow, and confidence, and charity, leaving everyone with the sweetest hope of his eternal health. Don Bosco returned to the oratory with a load of forbidden books, which he immediately threw into the fire. He told his young men, let us thank the Lord for everything. Don Bosco opened the gates of heaven as reasonably as he could, even to those who remained unrepentant. Bicio Giovanni served in Don Bosco's rooms from 1864 until 1871, and he affirmed, I can say that Don Bosco was called to the city many times to hear the confessions of sick and obstinate sinners. Whenever I questioned him upon his return to the oratory, his answer was always, well, that fellow confessed. Thank you all so much for watching this episode, and if you'd like to enroll in our Saturday Mass intentions for the promoters of St. John Bosco, just click on the link that should appear right above me on the screen. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.